What is work? Work can mean so many different things. This morning, your mom or dad probably woke up and went to work. Sometime today, you will probably be asked to help with housework. Cleaning dishes, sweeping the floor, making your bed, or some other chore. After you finish your Moving Beyond the Page lessons, you may still have some homework to do. You can work hard at your schoolwork. You can even work on your skills for a ball team. If you drop your calculator on the floor, it won't work anymore. The word work can have so many different meanings. To a scientist, however, words have very specific meanings. Even though the word work has many different meanings in everyday use, to a scientist, work means only one thing. Work is done when force makes an object move. To have work, then, you must have three things. An object, a force, and a distance that the object moves. If you have a lot of force, but the object does not move, then no work was done. Try this experiment. Go outside and find a really big tree. Push on it as hard as you can for one whole minute. Now, measure how far the tree moved. Did you do any work? Let's see. In order to do work, you must have three things. Let's run through the checklist. Do you have an object? Got it. That's the tree. Was a force applied to the object? Yes, you pushed on the tree with all of your force. Did the object move? If the tree did not move, then no work was done. Zero. Zip. Nothing. That was a lot of effort, but there is no work to show for it. If you were able to knock the tree over, however, then you did some work, and you might even have superhuman strength. If this last experiment left you feeling a bit lazy because you didn't do any work, try this next one. Find something in your house that weighs about one kilogram. One kilogram is about 2.2 pounds. A water bottle with one liter of water in it will weigh about one kilogram. A medium-sized bag of sugar or a flour is another option. Set your object on a counter and give it a little push so that it moves across the surface. Did you do any work? Let's see. You apply to force to an object, and it moved. That is the definition of work. Congratulations. If your mom or dad asks you what you did today, you can confidently say, you did work. Even though you applied more force to the tree outside, you did more work pushing the bag of sugar. That might seem strange, but it is true. If an object does not move, no work was done. Now that you know what work is, let's look at how you can measure work. Think about this scenario. Your mom walks into a room where you and your brother are playing video games. She looks at you and says, Please put this pair of shoes in the closet before you play any more video games. Then she looks at your brother and says, Please vacuum the floor, clean the windows, dust the furniture, and mow the lawn before you play any more video games. Wait a minute, your brother responds. That is not fair. You are making me do more work. Your brother looked at the work he was supposed to finish. Then, he looked at the work you were supposed to finish, and he decided that he got a bad deal. He did this by measuring in his mind how much time it would take him to finish, which is about two and a half hours, and comparing that to the time it would take you to finish, about two and a half minutes. Scientists also like to measure and compare work, and they have created a whole new unit of measure just for this purpose. Scientists measure distance in meters, weight in grams, and volume in liters. In the same way, they also measure work in joules and force in newtons. These aren't the types of joules that you wear on rings and necklaces. These joules measure work. The abbreviation for joules is a capital J. Force is measured in newtons and is abbreviated with an N, a capital N. You can calculate how much work is done by multiplying a force by the distance that the force is applied. Force times distance equals work. If you apply one newton of force over one meter, you have done one joule of work. Force times distance equals work. One newton times one meter equals one joule. If you apply two newtons of force over one meter, you will have done two joules of work. Now I know what you're thinking. All this work is exhausting. If only there were a machine that could help make this work easier. Great news. There are actually six machines that can help you do work. They are called simple machines. These six simple machines are inclined plane, screw, wedge, wheel and axle, pulley, and lever. 
Simple machines don't do the work for you like a robot, but they do make work easier. Simple machines can help you do work in one or both of the following ways. First, they can change the amount of force needed to move an object, or they can change the direction of a force that you exert on an object. Let's take a closer look at an inclined plane as an example. The inclined plane is a simple machine that works by reducing the amount of force needed to move an object. Let's say you have a big box on the ground and you need to get it into the back of a pickup truck. You try to pick it up, but you just can't. It is heavy, really heavy. Now, let's say that you have a smooth board that runs from the ground to the back of the truck. This is called an inclined plane. It takes less force to push the box up the inclined plane than it does to lift it straight up. But don't think you are getting out of any work here. Remember, work equals force times distance. So even though you apply a smaller force, you'll have to do it over a longer distance. In the end, you are doing the same amount of work. Simple machines don't reduce the amount of work. They only make it easier. Most simple machines reduce the amount of force, but increase the distance. But others work just by changing the direction of a force. A wedge is an example of this. You can create a wedge by putting two inclined planes back to back. When you hammer a wedge down, the two sides of the wedge change the direction of that force to split something apart. If you drive a wedge into a log, the downward force applied to the back of the wedge pushes outward and the log splits apart. The simple machine changes the direction of the force. Remember, simple machines make work easier by either reducing the amount of force needed or changing the direction of the force that is applied. Now you are ready to get working. As you complete this unit, you will have lots of activities and experiments. You will learn to measure work and you will learn how simple machines can help you do work. Alright, let's get working.